Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's had a lovely week so far. Uh, my name is Vanessa Godello, and I am one of your Peakskill City Council members. Uh, we are on week two of these Peakskill uh, coronavirus stakeholder update calls. Uh, so thank you for all the uh, thank you to all the stakeholders for joining us this morning, um, and for those of you watching at home, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you didn't get a chance to catch our uh, first call last week, um, that is posted on our Peak Skill City website as well as on our Facebook page um, and is uh, and has been broadcast on the government channel. Uh, today's call will also uh, be broadcast on the government channel um, in this coming week as well as published again on our Facebook page um, and on our city website. Um, but unfortunately, uh, we are still trying to uh, get our tech together. So uh, this this today, today's call will not be live stream, although we're hoping that we can live stream next week's call. Uh, so now the purpose of these calls is, is really to create a space for community leaders to convene in a COVID safe way with the intention of helping members of the public to understand and support efforts to respond to the coronavirus crisis by providing weekly updates from key agencies and organizations, um, including ways that we can all pitch in and lessen the burden for all of us. Um, as mentioned earlier, these calls will be happening on a weekly basis, Thursday at 9.30. Um, again, our intention is to live stream these meetings in the future, um, but for today, uh, we will just be posting, uh, editing and posting this video after the fact. Uh, every week, we will be rotating uh, stakeholders to give the public the ability to hear from a variety of agencies, as well as from different department heads here at P uh, City Hall. Uh, today, specifically, we will be hearing from um, HRH Hudson River Healthcare, um, from Reverend Phillips and Ben Bolton. We'll also be hearing from the school district, uh, Dr. David Mauricio, who is joining us. Uh, we'll also be he hearing from uh, Ms. Tuesday McDonald from the Youth Bureau, who will be giving us an update on Peak Skill Agencies together. Um, we've also got Jen Brown from the library today as well as uh, Vice President Luis Segarra joining us from the Rotary Club. And uh, we will, we also have uh, Chief Halmi who will be giving us an update uh, for, from the Peekskill Police Department as well as, uh, unfortunately, Cynthia Knox cannot make it, um, but our city manager will be pu putting up some slides uh, to give some updates um, in terms of what they've been working on um, and, and some needs that they've identified over at CHOP. Um, with that, I'll toss it over to Mayor Rainey to give some welcoming remarks. All right, so good morning again, uh, uh, everybody. Thank you all. First, every all of the stakeholders that are on the phone this morning, thank you for waking up and taking time out of your day. Uh, we're pretty sure that many of you, if not all of you, are all uh, busy running around trying to do the best you can to help us uh, address this crisis in this community. So thank you sincerely for being here. Um, also, to the people that are watching this video, um, the video is online. at the, This will be online at the City of Peekskill website, which is cityofpeekskill.com. You can also find this video on the city social media page with the City of Peekskill Facebook page, as well as the government channel. So once you do get a chance to watch this video, please notify family and friends in the area that this video will be um, aired on the local government channel as well as the city website so people can be updated. As uh, Councilperson Vanessa said, we'll be doing this on, on a weekly basis with numerous stakeholders and it's important that we get as much information out as we possibly can. We're getting daily information. We're on the calls, uh, uh, we're on uh, consistent calls with the county and state um, just about every day. We have a call with the state today at 11 o'clock a.m. with some more updates for our community. So we're trying to update as, uh, as many people as uh, effectively as we possibly can. So please encourage your family and friends to check out the city website, which is cityofpeacekill.com, the city social media page, which is City of Peacekill on Facebook, as well as the government channel for a consistent update. So um, more detailed updates, some of the uh, executive orders and some of the issues that um, City of Peace Bill has addressed may not be discussed in every one of these calls. However, we are addressing as many issues as we possibly can. And again, the information will be on the City of Peace Bill website. So I thank all of the stakeholders that are joining this conference call um, for taking time out of your day to make this possible. And um, I look forward to hearing some of the information. And again, we encourage people at home, please, please be consistent. Check the city website if you have access to the internet. Check the city social media page if you have if you have Wi-Fi, and check the government channel if you have access to a television. Other than that, thank you all, all you wonderful stakeholders for all the work that you've been doing. We've been collaborating with everybody and and doing the best we can as a city to make some things happen. So it's really really great to see uh, you know all of you on this call. But it's really great to know that the the impact that you all have on this community has done so much to get through this crisis. So thank you all, and um, I look forward to hearing what you got today.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So we'll go ahead and jump right into our agenda. Um, so I'll throw it over to Reverend Phillips, who will get us started with updates from Hudson River Healthcare. Reverend Phillips? Yes, th thank you very much. I'd like to uh, be able to share that um, Hudson River Healthcare, along with uh, one of our business uh, partners, needed additional testing for their um, for their employees ASAP in order for them not to lose uh, any of their products. And so we were able to um, set up an appointment for over for around 24, 25 staffers to be able to come to uh, get the testing so that they could move forward um, in, in their particular work. The other piece is that um, on this past Saturday, um, Ann Nolan and, and a team, I think, uh, uh, well, Ben will be able to share a little more about that, were able to meet um, with the governor's representative uh, to review two community health centers, Hudson River Healthcare and uh, the Mount Vernon Neighborhood Health Center, to set up another um, pop up. Uh, clinic in order to be able to continue to uh, speed up all of the, um, the the testing. And so this, for, for us in Westchester, if the Yonkers site will be starting tomorrow and the hours of operation will be Monday to Friday from nine to five, and then potentially considering uh, uh, Saturday um, as as well as well as being open on uh, Saturday and Sundays, and so that's uh, a major piece in terms of our being able to work with the governor's office. The other piece is that, and we will be letting you know when we may need your input on our letters of support in terms of letting all of our legislators know the important role that community health centers play in, in this particular pandemic and what's going to follow later as far as the recovery, because people will still have more longstanding needs of, of health care. So we'll keep you updated on that. And now perhaps um, Ben will be able to follow up with some other things that, that he's been involved with. Yeah, th thank you, Reverend Phillips. Um, so just with some general numbers to, to get us started, um, we're, we're seeing what is potentially the, the peak uh, in New York State uh, having occurred um, last week or early this week as the data is coming in and looking to hospitals being able to reach what, what's considered their baseline capacity uh, sometime around the 19th or 20th, which is encouraging uh, despite sort of the very large numbers that we're seeing. Um, we've seen in the, in the U.S. there have been just over 600,000 cases. In uh, New York State, there are 213 tested positive. But the important thing to realize is uh, out of all of those positive tests, uh, almost 92% don't require hospitalization. Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of these issues resolving at home. Um, and again, the, the key issue around the spread is uh, self-isolation. Um, and as you, you may or may not be aware of the, the government, governor's orders uh, yesterday about masking uh, whenever anyone is out in public is, is an effort to reduce the spread of the disease. We have seen in Westchester that the duplication rate, meaning how many days it takes for the number of cases to duplicate has dropped significantly. Uh, a while back, it was every three days. Now it's greater than seven days for a duplication rate which means that the isolation techniques are, are definitely working. From HRH Care's perspective and in treating our community, um, as you may know, under the, the various governor's orders and directives from the CDC, um, we've had to limit our inpatient services to urgent care uh, and defer uh, in-person well visits, but in responding to the need of the community, we rolled out a very robust 
uh, telemedicine presence uh, where people can call in and have face-to-face -face contact directly with their provider using kind of a, a medical version of, of Zoom. Uh, and when we rolled that out uh, on March 21st, we were seeing around 602 patients a week. As of last week, we've seen over 10,000 patients um, via telemedicine, so we're really relying on that as a point of service, um, and we'll be continuing with that. We're obviously monitoring the curve and the isolation plans and coordinating that with the governors to try to get our doors open as soon as safe uh, to start seeing more in person to to deal with some of the uh, pathologies that are coming out of post hospitalization. Uh, as Reverend Phillips mentioned, uh, the state is working, and we're working with the state very closely. They're very interested in expanding testing, um, not only to uh, right now work with uh, testing to to diagnose the the presence of the disease, but there's new testing that we hope will be coming out shortly, which will identify people who have the antibodies developed. Um, and that will also help with the return to work planning. Uh, so that's a, a brief summary of where we are. Okay, thank you, Vin. Uh, Vanessa, we'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Reverend Phillips. And, and thank you so much, uh, both of you, for being on here and for your updates. Um, Reverend Phillips, please, if, if there's any way for the city to support, whether that's via a letter or whatever means we can show support to HRH Care, please let us know. Um, we're absolutely on board and, and thank you for, for all the hard work that you and your team are doing to keep us all safe and healthy. Good. Thank you, we will. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you. And does anyone have any questions uh, regarding HRH Care? Not hearing anything. Oh, we'll we'll go ahead and move on. Um, so now I'll, I'll. I'm sorry. Does someone have a question? Someone try to get on. Okay. Sorry about that. Alrighty. So I'll I'll send it over to uh, Dr. Superintendent Dr. Mauricio, who will give us updates on the uh, Pisco School District. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, city leadership, for uh, hosting these calls. They're very informative to the entire community, and I'll make sure that we share this information out with our uh, stakeholders as well. Uh, just a brief update. Uh, I gave a more detailed update in, in last week's uh, call. So just a uh, brief update since then. Um, one is that we have moved to an online format for elementary education, including Uriah Hill all the way to Hillcrest. Uh, so that includes Oakside and Woodside as well. And what that means is parents now have two choices for educating their children. They can um, continue to get uh, paper packets. In fact, I picked one up for my daughter yesterday for pre-K and they are available at the high school and at Oakside from 9.30 to 12.30 every day. And uh, those packets uh, include uh, two weeks worth of work for children at the various grade levels. Um, we actually, I was there handing them out with Dr. Foster yesterday and we had numerous uh, families coming out to get them. So we actually had to make more copies for today. So please uh, make your way there. While you are there, you will also get a free breakfast and lunch for the children in your home and also a warm meal that is cooked by our food service staff. And then lastly, thanks to the city leadership and county leadership, when we have uh, non-perishable bags, we will be handing those out as well. So we really want everyone to take advantage uh, to stay healthy and also for our children to stay educated. The second option is that parents can go to the um, school website and or the district website and click on online learning opportunities, find the school, and then they will be able to uh, engage with Google Classroom, which is the platform we use. And uh, they will be able to see reading lessons, teachers reading to them. There are reading, math, science, social studies lessons that'll be there, physical education, art, music. Uh, teachers will be posting uh, activities. And the teachers, the parents now only have to go to their home, their child's homeroom teacher. And then every, every teacher that child has will be available. So it's a one-stop shop opportunity for our families. Uh, the second update I'd like to share is that uh, we 
are also hosting virtual town hall meetings. We held one last week for high school seniors and had over 800 people uh, sign in. And we only have 250 seniors, so we had a lot of parents sign in as well. So we are very excited about that. Uh, today at 11 a.m. on our district website, we're hosting a virtual town hall uh, broadcast for 9th through uh, 11th grade. And uh, we hope everyone joins us on the district website. And then uh, we also have available the middle school um, town hall meeting as well. And then lastly, every uh, high school, uh, every principal from each of our schools is hosting a weekly message for the community, uh, positive messages, staying healthy, just to be able to see their, their smiling faces and, and share some great details about learning uh, during this uh, um, very uh, difficult situation that we're all in, uh, but we are really making the best of it. And, uh, and then I will um, close with, I'd like to set up a meeting with uh, um, Mr. Stewart and uh, the mayor and Mrs. McDonald and anyone from the city leadership team um, to talk about some summer uh, programming, how the district might be able to help to infuse educational opportunities uh, at the library, um, at the Youth Bureau, at the Kylie Center, where we would provide uh, teachers to be able to go to those programs and, and provide instruction because we are concerned about the loss of academic learning. Um, so I'd like to set up a meeting with that, uh, about that. Uh, secondly, we can also talk about uh, the, the, your request, uh, Councilperson Agodello, related to extending the um, essential personnel in our child care program. So Mr. Stewart, I'll reach out to you and uh, or we'll, we'll reach out to your secretary and set something up for your team and our team. And we look forward to the continued partnership. Uh, and then I'll close by just saying we have, I know this is a difficult time for all of us, but we have um, used this opportunity to innovate our uh, learning processes for our children. And uh, in the end, we'll be better for it because we've learned so much and we're moving it into so many more online opportunities for our families. So we're using this as a uh, making lemonade out of lemon situation. And so thank you everyone. I, I appreciate everyone's hard work and I'm so glad to be part of the team. Thank you so much, uh, Superintendent uh, David Mauricio. We really appreciate all the hard work that you're putting in with your team over at the school district, and we're we're happy to be working in co collaboration. And I'm, um, and we're all really happy to hear that this is a, uh, we're we're thinking ahead. We're having some foresight and trying to find ways in which we can infuse more educational learning, even throughout our our summer program. So that's really great to hear. Um, does anyone have any questions for Dr. Mauricio regarding the school district or anything he, he just brought up? Um, this is uh, City Manager Andy Stewart. Simply to say, of course, uh, we look forward to that conversation about partnering with the school district to try to get as much academic support integrated into summer programs um, with the city and the school district working together. Uh, that's a great idea and look forward to engaging on that. Great, thank you, thank you. Thank you, City Manager. Anyone else, any other questions? Mm. Someone on their iPhone? <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll just keep going then. Um, so next we have uh, Ms. Tuesday McDonald who will be giving us an update uh, from the Youth Bureau and Peace Skill Agencies together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilperson Agudelo, for the opportunity. Um, I just want to give everyone just kind of like an overview of PAC. So a lot of people, these acronyms that we all have. Uh, PAC is Peaceful Agencies Together. It's a community coalition that aims to reduce youth substance abuse. Uh, we work with um, school district, of course, um, businesses, community, law enforcement, um, the police department is also one of our uh, big supporters, uh, religious organizations, civic and volunteer groups, and certainly youth serving organizations. We actually had a PAT meeting on yesterday, and normally it's an opportunity for us to bring in a guest speaker and for all of our partners to report out on what's going on in their respective um, agencies and businesses. And on yesterday, we did the same, but I added, um, to the agenda that we also report out on what we're doing right now to support our respective agencies. 
Uh, we had 25 agencies on the call on yesterday, so I certainly won't go through all of them because I know that I'll run out of time. But I do want um, everyone to know that we continuously welcome new partners uh, to be a part of uh, PAT and also um, with Pat, we also will forward, you know, your flyers. If you're doing something, you know, in the community uh, that certainly um, not only helps our youth, but also our community, feel free to send it to me. Um, I'll put my email um, in the chat, but it is T, T. McDonald at cityofpeatskill.com. Um, and we will then send that information out uh, to other Pat uh, members. Uh, Pat, um, has over uh, 70 agencies that are part. So certainly when you send me those flyers, uh, it will be beneficial to you because um, it, it will yield a wild, a, a, a bigger network. Um, also, I just wanted to say that we're also um, updating our directory uh, for PAT. And what I'm adding um, during this time is what the respective agencies or businesses or district is doing during um, the COVID uh, pandemic because a lot of people are, are, of course, staying true to their mission, but some of them are doing, uh, doing some extra things because they see the need. So certainly um, send those things to me um, and I will make sure that uh, we forward your information um, out to the community and um, just let's just keep working together so that we can get through this together, um, you know, collectively as a team. Thank you. Oh, oh, last thing, and I will send to um, this stakeholder uh, coalition um, the information um, that I gathered uh, from the um, members um, on yesterday. Like I said, um, I want to be fair. I mean, we had over 20 agencies report out, and I don't um, want to start because I know that I'll take up all the time. But certainly, I will send you the notes from that meeting so that all of you have it. Thank you, Ms. McDonald. Um, thank you for all your hard work with the Youth Bureau and with Peak School Agencies together. Um, as, as just to reiterate, if anyone has any flyers, um, any materials that they'd like to see sent around to the large uh, listserv that uh, Ms. Tuesday has now grown, thank you for that. Uh, please feel free to reach out to her at tmcdonald at cityofpeatskill.com. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Ms. McDonald? All right, I'm not hearing any questions, so we'll We'll keep going. Uh, so now we have uh, Ms. Jen Brown from the library. Good morning. Thank you, Councilperson Aguidello. Um, just want to tell you what's happening at the library. We have been closed since March 16th. We will continue to be closed as long as the New York um, New York State on pause executive order is in effect. We have moved entirely to online services. And one thing I want to highlight, uh, particularly for the school district, is that we are offering library cards. We've simplified the process. You can get a card so you can access all of our online services. All you need to do is email the library at peak, P-E-K, at WLSmail.org, and we will issue a card. Um, there's a lot of services available we particularly again for the school district mm -hmm. tutor.com is available for uh, homework help um, as well as some other educational and then we also have some entertainment resources available we are looking right now at a staged in approach for reopening we are talking about having senior only hours um, looking at ways that we can create some social distancing once we are reopened. Um, so we have been meeting as a staff on a regular basis every week, and then the supervisors have also been meeting separately on a weekly basis. Our big concern right now is, as everyone knows, we go out for a budget vote every year. In order to do so, we have to have a um, budget proposition petition, and this is normally the time in which we gather signatures that right now has proven to be almost impossible because there's nowhere we can go to gather signatures. So we are looking at um, trying some different ways in being able to get those signatures so that we can get our budget proposition on the ballot um, 
while still maintaining social distancing. So one of the options we've been discussing is putting the petition on the library website, asking people to download it at home, print it off, have people in your family sign the petition, and then you witness the signature. Um, you cannot witness your own signature and explaining that process to everybody um, might be a little challenging. So that is kind of where we are at with that. Um, so that's pretty much what's going on at the library. Uh, in the meantime, at the library, we have done some extensive cleaning. The carpet has been cleaned, ceiling tiles around all the vents have been replaced, all the air filters have been replaced, all the vents themselves have been cleaned. Um, all of the surfaces have been cleaned. We are asking everybody that has items checked out to please keep them in their house. They will not be charged overdue fines. We are not charging fines during this whole process so that um, we do not have any items coming in that potentially could be contaminated. And that will continue again until we get the all clear. Um, because science has not told us how long germs can live on surfaces at this point, we just feel it's safer that everybody just keep their items at home. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, thank, thank you, Mrs. Brown, David Mauricio here. Uh, so excited to hear about all the online opportunities. I did get some questions from parents who wanted to access those without, but did not have a uh, library card. So we will be sure to let them know how they can get a uh, online library card. And we appreciate you doing that. And so I look forward to sharing all that information on our website and we'll continue to do so. And I love, that you still have tutor.com available for uh, families. I'm gonna share that out immediately. I think that's gonna be a huge resource. So I uh, greatly appreciate it. We've actually increased the hours of tutor.com while all this is happening as well. Um, please tell everybody if they're emailing us, requesting a library card, the basic information we need is of course their name, their address and their phone number. And that will um, be able to get us to be able to set them up with a new library card. Great, thank you. We'll do thank you so much, John. Um, could you just repeat again the email in which folks could uh, reach out to to get their library card? Sure. The email address is peak, P E K, at W L S mail, M A I L dot org. Great. So for folks at home that are watching, if you don't have your library card, it's uh, the library has created a really simple way for you to do that uh, from home. Um, so you can access a wide array of, of books and videos and music online um, to, to keep yourself busy and not feeling too bored. Um, so thank you so much for that, uh, Jen Brown. We, we really appreciate you being part of this call and, and thank you for all your hard work. Uh, Council person, could you repeat the uh, email one more time? Yes, it's P-E-K at W-L-S-M-A-I-L dot O-R-G. Um, and just a note, I'm taking notes from this call like I did last time and we'll circulate them to the panelists here. So that email along with other information will be provided in that summary. Great, thank you so much, city manager. Do we have any other questions? Not hearing any, I'll um, send it over to uh, Vice President Luis Segarra from the Rotary Club. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, just a quick snippet on what the Rotary is. We're a hundred year old organization with over 80 active members who are committed to our community. We provide grants and donations to over 50 non-for-profit organizations, over 50, 15 yearly scholarships. We also provide youth leadership opportunities, children's and community events, such as the Cherry Blossom Festival and our annual horse show event at Blue Mountain Reservation. Our motto is service above self and we are always active in our community, helping out in any way we can. We've been focusing the last couple of weeks on food distribution this week on Tuesday, we continue to collaborate with Feeding Westchester, manage the landscaping and design, and the city manager's office to unload, pack, and distribute in front of the field library 
over 12,000 pounds of food to the community. And this will go on every Tuesday until further notice. Every Wednesday, we are providing dinner to the Jan Peak House that we serve for our homeless population. And we have a great working relationship with Cynthia Knox of CHOPS. On Fridays from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., we're working with Hope for Youth that we distribute individual hot food at 1060 Lower South Street. This food is for our community. We also deliver some of the food to our local care center, our first responders, which are our police, our fire department, and our EMS services. We are continuing to further notice. Our members continue to provide food to Fred's, to Fred's pantry on an ongoing basis. And anyone with canned donations can drop them off at Manager Landscaping located at 1060 Lower South Street. We continuously meet to see what other programs we can provide to our community, especially our most vulnerable at this time. And anyone who would like to volunteer and help the Rotary Club, please reach out to us via our website. Uh, during this time, we can use volunteers to help with all what we are doing. We ask people to be patient and more understanding and to know that this will pass, but only if we continue to look after each other, especially our seniors, and to follow guidelines in place to keep us all safe. I want to thank those voting members that are on today, which is Jen Brown, David Mauricio, and one of our new Rotaracts, Council President Vanessa Agudelo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luis. And thank you for all the hard work that you've been doing with the Rotary Club. Um, can you please just one more time uh, mention the dates and times in which uh, y'all will, will be coordinating food distribution? It's on every Tuesday, the food distribution in front of the field library. We start about 1030 until the food is gone. And actually, the food was, was all gone, over 12,000 pounds of it. It was gone in, in about an hour and a half. Oh, wow. A lot of people came, the word is getting out. Uh, we're all doing a great job as far as getting the message out. Um, on Fridays, we have the hot meals, individual hot meals, and start at 1 p.m. So until it's completed. Uh, some of that hot meals are taken to our first responders, which are our police, fire department, our EMS, and our care centers. A lot of our members are individually also providing lunches and breakfasts to our first responders. So, as well as who are doing a fantastic job for our great city. And then you mentioned Friday? On Friday, it's in front of, uh, it's at 1060 Lower South Street. That's uh, Lanza's, um, landscaping. We're giving individual hot food packages to everyone who shows up. And, and that's at what time? From one to three, one every to three. Friday until further notice. Got it. Well, thank you so much. Um, I actually have a question. How can folks at home get involved? How can we help um, with your efforts and food distribution? Um, they can reach out to our website. Um, a lot of the people in the city, a lot of our members are, are well known. So they can reach out to any member and, and ask how they can help. We can use help at, in front of the library on Tuesdays. Uh, there's a lot of food that comes in and we try as fast as we can to unload pack and distribute. We have people keeping um, everyone six feet apart. So when they come and get the food, um, so that'll be helpful. Um, and um, the, the Friday, we also distribute the food, the hot food there. We can use volunteers to help keep, you know, the distance in, in the cars, because in there you have to come in with the car that's a drive-in place. And, um, you know, keeping the lines forming, letting people know, flag them down, this is a place where you have to come into, that'll be helpful. Um, if anyone wants to bring canned food, even at any of the locations, whether it's a field library as well, we'll gladly accept them and take them to Fresh Pantry. Uh, so those, those are some of the ways they can help out. Um, and anything else they can think of, you know, we, we constantly call our seniors to find out how they're doing. We call our members individually to find out how they're doing. And, and anyone else who they feel doesn't know about the program, you know, spread the word. That, that's very helpful to the community. Great, thank you so much, Luis. So for folks at home, if you've got any extra time on you know, Tuesday mornings, early afternoon, or Friday early afternoons, uh, please reach out to Luis Cigar or anyone on the Rotary Club um, and see how you can pitch in, um, as long as you're, you're healthy, right? We don't wanna be going out Absolutely. if we're feeling sick and spreading any, um, any viruses. We definitely wanna avoid that. 
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Luis. Is there anyone else on the call that wants to ask any questions regarding uh, food distribution or the Rotary Club? All right, moving right along. Um, actually, I think that this is a really good segue uh, into uh, Andy. I know that Cynthia Knox couldn't make it from CHOP, um, but uh, I know that she sent over some slides she wanted to share regarding um, the increase in, in the food need. I think you're still on mute. All right, I am unmuted. And I will share that slide. Great. See how that works. Um, so Cynthia did send in this slide. She expressed her regrets. She couldn't join us uh, as discussed earlier. Um, they're rotating agencies and providing opportunity and, um, and this is the new way of doing it. She sent a slide. Um, and this is simply to show the increase in demand at Fred's pantry during the health crisis. Um, and she provided this data, which goes back three years. Each bar stands for a previous year, and the, the light gray bar is for 2020. Um, it just shows a rather dramatic increase in the number of individuals who came over previous years in the same week. Uh, or more or less the same period of March and April. And so she showed the, the number of walk-ins to their pantry. And then on the following slide, um, you know, the number of people served by those people who groceries from the pantry provided with them. So it goes to reinforce the point that the need has grown dramatically and that these, these volunteer efforts uh, by folks in the Rotary and and in Fred's pantry and the coordination work by the city's nutrition program director, Jonathan Samora, as liaison to feeding Westchester, getting more food deliveries into the city into various distribution sites um, is very important work. Um, Cynthia also mentioned that she's working with the Hispanic uh, coalition to provide more food deliveries. Um, out to families who can't get to the grocery store. And she appreciates the support of the community and, uh, and will hopefully be with us next week. And that is the story from CHOP. Great, thank you so much, city manager. Um, I, I don't know if anyone has any questions, but we probably should just uh, wait to to send those over to Cynthia so she can answer them herself as opposed to um, expecting our city manager to, to have answers to those questions. So. Well, I just wanted to mention in addition um, that she said they're still working, they're still maintaining their two days of week distribution, previously was one day. Um, and they're also trying to assist the connector ride group with additional volunteers to help with grocery deliveries. And connector ride is, is an important service. I think I mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. um, but they are, they do have volunteers, they are operating in peak skill, and they do provide a service. Well, they'll go to the supermarket and bring food to folks who aren't able to get out. And they're a, a group within the, um, the Westchester Family Services Agency and can be found on the website just by searching for Connector Ride. And if folks want to get involved with that initiative, who should they reach out to? Um, I think you, you go straight to their, the, the Connector Ride okay. link, which is on the Westchester Family Services. I don't, I don't think I'm using that title exactly right. It might be Family Services of Westchester or something like that. Um, I could put that in the notes, but they're, they're easy to find. Great. All righty. Does anyone have any comments? Uh, don't forget, we still have our police department. Uh, oh, no, yeah, no, I haven't forgotten about the chief. Okay, not hearing uh, any questions or, or comments. I'll, I'll move it over to, uh, last but not least, uh, Chief Halmi to give us an update on the police department. Thank you, Chief, so much for being here. Uh, thank you, Council, Council Parthen Aguadillo, and uh, greetings to Peekskill. You know, first and foremost, I just wanted to, you know, let people know that, that through this crisis, the Peekskill Police Department is still a, uh, you know, 
we're, we're operating, you know, with full service. Uh, there are some changes. There are things that we've done where we do take some phone complaints now where we never really took phone complaints. We're doing more uh, complaints through the lobby where we'll take reports uh, at a computer at what we'd call the records window, not the main window where the officers are, are answering the phones, but we have another window and we'll take some reports at that location. You know, we do ask people's patience when, you know, when calling about some, you know, some minor complaints, you know, more of the, the noise complaint or, you know, ju just those things that it might take us a couple extra minutes uh, to get there. So we just ask for patience. Uh, we do ask, you know, when we're going on calls now, we'll ask people to, to please step outside. You know, we're trying to limit that uh, inside interaction and enclosed spaces with people as best as we can. So we do ask people, if, if possible, you know, come outside. Come outside to a porch or a hallway. Uh, you know, just even if you're in your, your doorway, you know, let us just, just stand out so that we can socially distance. You know, it's not something that's easily done you know, inside, you know, someone's, someone's home, apartment, hallway, whatever. But, you know, we ask you to, you know, just try to help with that. We also ask people that if they are experiencing any symptoms to, to please, you know, let the first responders know whether that's police, fire, EMS, just let them know, hey, you know, I, I am, you know, experiencing a little of this, a little of that. You know, I'm not sure. I don't think is a problem, but could be. I mean, obviously, we would treat everyone as if, you know, as if they possibly, you know, been exposed, but, you know, we're trying to, you know, to work mutually with people uh, that we can obviously limit the spread just like everyone else. You know, we're reminding people of social distancing. I know, you know, we hear it ad nauseum, uh, but especially in the parks, you know, a, a really popular location now for us is the, the Riverwalk Trail. You know, it is skinny in parks. You know, it is uh, a little restricted bottlenecks in some areas. You know, give some people time to, to walk, you know, enjoy the scene, enjoy the, you know, the beautiful riverfront, you know, don't just get right on top of people, you know, you know, wear your masks. Also, you know, be very, very cognizant of, uh, you know, with your PPE equipment, you know, not just, not littering. You see a lot of gloves, you see masks, you know, in the streets, you know, on sidewalks. We ask people to, you know, properly uh, dispose of these items. And I think that's, you know, that's important too for, uh, you know, for stopping the spread. We want to, you know, we want to remind everyone that the city has, the city has right now through an emergency order, we've put a hold on uh, the meter enforcement in the city that the ordinance for, for parking meters are not in effect right now. Uh, one of the things that we did place was restaurant parking that is in effect. You know, people just can't, you know, leave their car in those spots and then think, oh, it, I could just stay there all day. They're clearly marked. Don't park there. You know, we're asking for people's compliance with, you know, certainly with parking. Uh, we, we just had residential street sweeping take effect now. And, you know, this takes place once a day for once a week. I'm sorry, for a few hours uh, on that given day, uh, Monday through Friday, depending on where your your particular street is. But we ask that people you know, make an extra effort, park on the, on the proper side. You know, we're trying, you know, to minimize enforcement at this time. You know, we understand hardships people have, hardships of getting out and actually moving cars or hardships, you know, financial, or whatever that may be. But we still need, you know, we want to work together with the residents of the city. You know, we, we want to have that compliance, you know, especially in safety related uh, parking matters too. You know, your, your fire zones, your handicap parking, blocking people's driveway, being too close to corners. You know, we don't want to be cre creating safety issues. Those ordinances are still in effect, and, and you could get a ticket for that, but we're asking people, you know, to just, just pay more attention to this. When the parking is over, so you don't have to worry about that. But it's, you know, it's, it's just a couple of little things that we ask people to pay a little extra attention to. Uh, another thing we ask people to pay more attention to are our drivers uh, in the city. You know, there are more people walking, especially around the parks. You know, people are, you know, trying to get out of the house. You know, they're, they're trying to get a little bit of exercise while socially distancing. And we ask that, you know, that, that drivers be a little more cognizant that there might be more people walking around, uh, especially, you know, as I mentioned, in the park areas. So, so just be more cognizant of that. 
Uh, we also ask uh, people to be very wary of scams out there. Uh, there are scams where, you know, to buy equipment with, there's no intention of them ever sending you anything. Uh, the scams where they're asking people for donations. You know, if, you, if you're looking to make donations, you know, use the, uh, you know, the, the trusted, you know, sites uh, and, and, you know, whether it's national like Red Cross, St. Jude's, any of these, you know, these uh, organizations that are well known or even local like, like the Rotary Club, you know, use those. But j just be very wary of these scams that come across where people are asking for money and they may very well, you know, not be real uh, agencies. Uh, also tests, people, you know, will do scams for, to set you up for a test. And really what they're doing is getting all your personal information. So we ask, you know, be very wary of that. You know, do that, you know, through your healthcare provider through the Department of Health. You know, don't just do it on, on random phone calls uh, or, or email phishing scams where someone might be reaching out to you uh, where you did not contact them first. And same thing with like, you know, people, you know, talking about uh, cures or preventative measures, you know, chances are that almost all of these are fake and they're just scams, people trying to get your money. Lastly, I, I just, you know, really thank the Facebook community for, you know, for all their support. Um, you know, we have gotten more, more support from our, our, our local residents and businesses especially for equipment, then we have the state or the county or the federal, the federal government. It's really the, the, the people of Peekskill that have, have gotten us and the fire department and EMS, you know, through, through a lot of the, the toughest times, you know, I mean, Brian, Brian Fassett, you know, he gave us half of our, half of the mess we have, we've gotten because of him, you know, the, the Newman Agency, State Farm, Manzers, BASF, the Yacht Club, Homestyle, Again, the rotary, you know, your food like like I said, Homestyle, Chipotle, all the different places that have just you know reached out to us. I know Kenny Lewis uh, the other day fed the whole police department, all the tours. Luis himself has has you know made donations to you know to offer support of, of food. There's been so many, you know, I you know I, I can't even name them all right now, but we're totally indebted to the to the people, the businesses of Peekskill that are really you know, help their first responders through this crisis. And, you know, it's awesome to know that, that you guys are out there for us. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Chief, uh, for that update and, and for all your hard work. And, and thank you to the community at large for everything that they've done to, to keep our police officers safe um, and, and well fed and with uh, their spirits up. So we, we all really appreciate that and, and the work that our, our police department does. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Chief Almi? Um, yeah, I have a question which I think folks have on their minds is, is when they see um, a violation, what they think might be a violation of the social distancing rule, whether it's inside a business or in, in a public area, uh, what, what, what should they do? Well, we are working right now with uh, ourselves and the building department. Uh, you know, the building department is kind of handling a lot of the violations that could could take place during during business hours, especially Monday through Friday. Uh, police department is taking care of a lot of those issues uh, off hours and weekends, uh, and as well with, with social distancing. You know, you can contact the police department. You know, we'll we'll send people out. You know, a lot of times you have to realize. Uh, you know, people will call about a particular group. By the time we get there, the group is separated or the group has, uh, you know, you see a police car come and, and they disperse, but, but that's our goal anyhow. So, so you know, feel free to, to contact the police department. You know, there are laws in place, you know, should, should people not comply? There are, there are public health laws and there are you know, even some of the penal laws that, that can be utilized should people not comply or fail to comply, especially when I'm told to do so. Obviously, compliance is our first, uh, our first goal. You know, no one is looking to, you know, be issuing summonses, arresting people for anything like this. And, and, and to date, we, we've, we've really gotten, you know, compliance from people, people understand. And I, I think we see it in all our places, you know, 
I work in a police department which has multiple people in a building at once. And I know I'm reminding people all the time. And, and some of you may be in places where, you know, if, if you're with coworkers, you got to remind your coworkers, hey, 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 back up a little bit. A little more difficult in, in public spaces. You know, you see things online, you see things in the news about, you know, people are very frustrated, altercations have broken out. You know, we obviously don't want that, but, but feel free to contact us. Uh, again, the, the building department will be handling a lot of, uh, you know, building locations as well. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. And um, just, just so I have like a, a clear understanding, are all of our officers wearing masks now when they're out and about? I'm sorry, Chief, did you? Oh, I think he might have frozen. I'm not sure if you're asking me a question, but your yeah, audio is, is not. Yeah, no, I, I was asking. I'm I'm just wondering if if um if our officers are wearing masks when they're when they're out and about during during their time of work. They should be, yes. And especially now with, with Friday, you know, starting starting the governor's you know, mandating that everyone should be wearing a mask uh, right. outside in public, especially in groups. I believe in the governor's order. If you're alone and walking, it's 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 not totally mandated. But certainly, if you are you are around anyone, uh, that you need to have a mask. So it's even more important for our offices to be complying with that as well. And that starts tomorrow. And and it seems as though you all have an adequate amount of supplies for everyone. Right now, right now we do. Okay. Uh, adequate is always a, you know, it's it's a there's a, it's it's not an easy number to calculate from the standpoint of when your exposures are minimal, you're using minimal equipment. When your exposures start to maximize, then you need to maximize equipment. So, at at, at our current rate of usage, we're okay. You know, should things really become more problematic in this city, which you know, which, as we follow all the the governor, the the you know the county legislator, you know we're hoping that it's plateauing now. So yes, we are hoping to to be maintaining an adequate supply right now. And and please let us know if there are any more needs. And, and you know, because the community has been so helpful, we definitely want to to let the community know if if there are those needs, and perhaps we can gather more donations if, if that's what we need to do. Great. I thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support of the council, the mayor, and and even uh, you know County Legislator Smith has been uh, you know instrumental in helping us as well. So we really do appreciate everyone's support. Great. Thank you so much, Chief Helmy. Are there any other questions thank for you. the chief? Not hearing any. Um, We'll uh, move forward. It looks like we've gotten to the end of our agenda um, in terms of updates. Uh, Mayor, did you want to give any final remarks? Yes. Once again, I uh, thank you all sincerely for all that you're doing. Um, it's, it's really great to hear so many people are, are doing so much during this time of crisis. It shows a lot about the integrity of the city of Peekskill and um, our, our, our priority of coming together and unifying as a community. Um, especially, uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, Ms. McDonald and Dr. Mauricio uh, extremely for um, catering to the needs of the children during these, um, these, these hard times. It's not just a pandemic, but there's some other incidents that happened in this community it has really had a, an emotional effect on these children. And um, they, they were very proactive, all of the principals and the educators in our community, you know, they're still, they're still in the front lines as well. Um, especially thanks to our DPW staff for continuously working picking up, you know, taking risks every single day, picking up everyone's trash around the entire city. Um, and they're committed to, to the work. So thank you. I um, also want to give a special um, thanks to um, PK Blends. I stopped by there this morning around 8.15. They're donating 100 bottles of um, uh, healthy juices to um, uh, different organizations in the city of Peekskill, including the Hudson, uh, Hudson Valley Presbyterian Church uh, Hospital, um, our EMS workers and our firefighters. And I believe to our um, uh, members of our police department who are on staff during this time, they're actually 
uh, delivering some of those as we speak. Um, I stopped by there this morning. So this is just another another um, uh, show of what the city of Peekskill has to offer and how wonderful it's been, you know, being the mayor of such a great city with so many great people. Um, I, I couldn't say thank you enough to everyone, you know, to the Rotary Club for all that you guys are doing. Um, you know, West Cop for they're doing the youth road, school district, the library, police department, fire department, our EMS uh, team, you know, there's different organizations that are really coming together to try to address all of the needs of the city. But I especially want to thank all of those that are working with these children and, you know, keeping them, you know, keeping them focused. You know, Dr. Mauricio and the school district is making numerous ways to give the, the kids opportunity to still finalize their school year. Uh, online or virtually, and I, I think that's very important. And I thank him for always, uh, you know, in stressing that message that the school year still exists. <laughs> you still have to get the work done. And um, this gives an opportunity to all of our, our parents and guardians to be a lot more involved. So thank you for, for stepping up during these times of, of, of um, a challenge and crisis. But for the most part, um, thank you all for doing all that you're doing. Um, I appreciate everything that you are all doing. I look forward to continuing this uh, effort. There'll be a um, much much more updates coming from the city manager's office and myself on the city website and i again encourage everyone you know council person agudella for organizing this thank you sincerely for everyone who was watching please share the link again will be on the city website the link again will be on our city social media which is our city of peace Kill facebook page and importantly for those who don't have access to internet or wi-fi on our local government channel so if, um when you get a chance if you're watching the news the news 12 flip right over to the government is going on locally. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to myself, Councilperson Agadello, any member of the council, or our city manager, uh, Andy Stewart. So I just want to say thank you all and continue the great work and, um, you know, continue making this one of the best cities on earth. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. And, and just to reiterate for, for folks at home, again, um, if for, for anyone who wants to catch any up, our most up-to-date news um, in terms of a COVID-19 response from the city, please check out our city website at the citypeakskill.com uh, webpage. Please continue to follow public health guidance um, that's constantly being updated on the CDC website, um, including frequent hand washing and social distancing to help slow the spread of the virus and to enable medical services to meet the growing demand. Uh, these are, are very crazy times, so please let's take care of ourselves and each other. Um, if anything, this pandemic has really shined a light on our interconnectedness and right now more than ever before um, before we are more dependent on, we're now more than ever, we're more dependent on each other than we've ever been. Um, so let's please continue to take proper precautions to limit the spread of the virus, uh, check in on each other, reach out if you need help. Um, please, please reach out if you need help. I think that that's a big one. Um, I, I know a lot of folks are having uh, issues with their mental health. Um, well, given kind of the, the quarantine lifestyle that we now exist in. Um, so please, you, you do not need to suffer alone and, and reach out to any of us, any community leaders, uh, any of the organizations that are part of this call, friends, family, um, we're all here in this together. So thank you all so much for being here and we'll see you next week. Have a great rest, rest of your week, everyone. You too. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take care. Take care.